We have a very special guest for you today, a man who's had many careers in his lifetime. He's a fantastic entrepreneur, but he's best known to be a man who goes after what he wants and there is no stopping him. So welcome to Michael Bailey Smith. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate that. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about, you've had many careers, more than most have had in a single lifetime. Tell us a little bit about um, your rise, your careers, and what you're doing now and what you're passionate about. Yeah, so, um, you know, I grew up in, as an Air Force brat. Mm -hmm. My dad traveled around the world. I went to high school in Iran. I graduated from Tehran, Iran. Wow. And uh, my, my superintendent was one of the 50 American hostages. So I wanted to, but my goal was always to play college football. That was my goal, my passion. So how am I gonna get there? This is where I started thinking about goal setting, right? So I said, well, for me to get to play college football, my parents, I'm the oldest of six kids. They couldn't afford to send me to college. Mm. So okay, I'm gonna, join the, I'm gonna join the military. Well, I just wanna do any military. I wanna push myself. So I became a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division, right? So I pushed myself physically. And it's not too, it's kind of crazy jumping out of a perfectly good airplane, right? Very crazy. Yeah. Yes. So I did that for three years and then I, then I, I got out and I had a chance to go to Notre Dame. Hmm. Uh, but then the chaplain that was helping me, he played at Kansas State uh, in, in my unit. He said, you know what, if you go to Eastern, you might play earlier, hmm. play often. And so I said, okay, and I'm, I was from Michigan. Uh, I have relatives in Ypsilanti. And so that's where I went. And so I walked on. And from there, I was redshirted my freshman year, then worked my butt off and started my, my, my redshirt freshman year and then worked my way up to I became a full starter junior and senior year until I had an opportunity to go to the Cowboys. Very nice. But I was very focused, still goal oriented the mm -hmm. whole way. And, uh, but that career didn't last very long because I hurt my knee my senior year, then went to the Cowboys and re-injured re it. Mm. And then they released me. Mm. And uh, I had a kind of a tough time. Really? I did, I couldn't, I couldn't find myself. Uh, Cause you had so focused on, you know, becoming a professional football player that that was your dream. So what do you do after that? And so, I went back, finished my degree in computer aided design. Was crazy enough to chase some girl I thought I was going to marry to San Diego. Mm -hmm. uh, that lasted about six months, okay. <laughs> maybe shorter. And then I went with a friend of mine who was going up from San Diego to LA to audition for the movie called Nightmare on Elm Street Part Five. Yes, scary movie. Yes, and the role was Super Freddy, a bigger version of Freddy Krueger. Well, he auditioned, and then as we we're walking out, the casting director said, "Hey." why don't you read? And I go, well, I'm just with here. I'm not an actor, I'm just here with him. She says, come on in. So I went in and met this guy named Stephen Hopkins, who was a well-known well director. And he's like, hey, Michael, have you seen any of the Freddy Krueger movies? And I said, oh yeah, of course. He goes, so we need someone to laugh big and scary like Freddy Krueger, can you do it? And so I let out this big laugh and he goes, that's awesome, guess what? You got yourself a job. Seriously. And I'm like, well, I'm working at Xerox and I'm gonna have to take some days. He goes, yeah, take two weeks off. And that's what I did. I did the movie, I got my SAG card, I got my first couple lines and I loved it. Hmm. This is what I wanted to do for hmm. the rest of my life. I found what I wanted to do. I was lost, right? After football. So I was in San Diego. I found a way to get up to Los Angeles. I, I stayed in a weird guy's apartment for a while and, uh, <laughs> And uh, I got a flunky job, not a flunky job, I got a job at a computer place. Mm -hmm. And then I studied my butt off, goal mm -hmm. setting, right? Right. Um, and that's one thing that's really important that that's helped drive me throughout my career is that people always, you know, think of the bigger picture and oh my gosh, I can't make it. No, set your goals are beginning, intermediate and long term. And then think about steps each time and just focus on those steps and each day do something towards that goal no matter no matter what it is right. big or small to get better at it and to, and move towards that goal and that's what i did as an actor on my um, this is a little embarrassing but on my mirror in my bathroom mm -hmm. i be a little confessional here i put on the wind uh my mirror it says michael bailey smith hollywood's new leading man this is in 1989. i love it i love it <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, that really didn't turn out that way. But the thing is, uh, I fell into playing bad guys and I was really good at it. And the key about playing bad guys is to know that that you're not really doing bad because of them, you're not, right? right? right. You're, you're on a mission, you know, you have goals and you have a purpose on why you're be doing these quote bad things. And I got really good at it. And I just started working. I ended up doing 
probably 50, 50 different films, about 100 episodes of television, probably about 50 commercials, tons of uh, video uh, game, you know, mocap and things like that, uh, print work. I just had a great ride. I did it for 25 years mm -hmm. uh, and it was good. But, you know, I, I wanted to move on. I want to do something different. And at, when instead of waiting tables as an actor, right. I uh, I worked at a test laboratory as an engineer and worked my way up from engineering to operations to business development. And I I work for this company where I've taken this company from zero in North America to over sixty million in less than three years. And after this year, I will be over a hundred. Impressive, well, impressive. I, you know, thank you for saying that. But it's just it's just I love doing what I do. Well, and that's, I think that's the magic. If you love doing it, so you're not going to yes. work every day, you get to yes. get up and get, go and have a challenge every day. Mm -hmm. I have to ask you, in your business life, do people recognize you and realize that you are the worst, most scariest film? I won't <laughs> even watch half the movies because they terrify me. Do people recognize you for that? Or have you put that in a compartment and locked that away and, and now you're moving on to the other things? All my football buddies know me as Smitty. Yes. Right. So, but as an actor, you, I use Michael Bailey Smith, which is my full name. And so as in, in business development and, and in the business world, I also use Michael Bailey Smith. Mm -hmm. It sets me apart. Right. And the, the secret and the key is my customers will Google me sure. and go, holy moly, right. holy crap, this right. guy's done all this stuff. And then, then it becomes a talking point in meetings, mm -hmm. right? It's a great way to open the door. You know, most, most guys that play bad guys uh, are really super nice guys because it's great to step into that other skin. Right. You know, I played a lot of like From the Hills Have Eyes, where I won an award. I um, uh, played like Star Trek, uh, uh, Freddy Krueger, all these different crazy characters, and just straight up like neo Nazis and White Brotherhood, you know, Aaron Brotherhood dudes. And I'm kind of a method actor. I like yeah. getting into it, you know, and on the set, you know, I'll stay away from people because I want to just. You stay in that? Yeah, I try to as much as possible. Oh my yeah. goodness. It's fun. Nice. So you like to motivate people now. You obviously love business and building businesses. Yeah. What is next for you? Do you have something else on the horizon? Well, um, I'm still writing. Mm -hmm. I've written about 10 screenplays. Uh, I've written a lot that's, a lot of it's based on my life. Okay. Um, there's never really been a story about uh, what would be, what's it like for an athlete to all of a sudden just lose everything? Right. What do they do after that? That would be How a do great they deal story. With that? So that's one of the stories. I have, I have another one that's going to actually get produced next year. It's called Black Moth. Mm. It's a religious kind of a antichrist uh, film uh, that really tries to ans answer the question, why do bad things happen to good people? So mm. it's a big, it's a big question. So, mm. Yeah, and I try to answer it. Well, you've had a fascinating career. So what advice would you give to someone watching this that says, I would like to do any one of your careers yeah. and follow in your footsteps. You love to motivate people. You're a great role model. Um, any advice that you would give to someone watching this saying, well, what do I do next? How do I get started? Or how do I get out of the rut that I'm in to yeah, try and so, move forward? Um, you know, someone said this, I, I've heard this or read this, that the greatest inventions in the world, probably the cure for cancer, uh, the the greatest athletes, the greatest actors are in the graveyard because people are afraid to take that opportunity to take that step forward and make it happen. Yeah. They're, they're afraid. You have an opportunity to do something pretty special. Do it. Figure out how to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a reason in the dictionary the word average exists because most people are average. Hmm. Don't be average. Hmm be above average and it's easy to do. Just apply yourself, just figure out a way to make it happen. And that's, and that's, you know, that's kind of how I live my life. If I'm not doing something to make my life better, to move my career forward, then it, it makes me sad. It hurts me. <laughs> a little crazy maybe, but that's, that's the truth. Well, that's pretty great advice. You. And you're, you uh, are a great role model. Oh, so. my gosh. Thank you. I have two boys that are awesome. Um, one's, One's a uh, special operations. I can't say too much more than that. He's really cool. Mm -hmm. Another one's uh, 17, a junior, and he's getting looks at from college to play mom well, possibly play football. So we'll see oh what happens. Thank well, you. this has been a pleasure to just kind of peek into your world. And I thank, thank you. you so much. And everybody who's watching, you should follow his career, oh, listen to his motivation, anything you can find, because he is a fantastic person and a fantastic role model. So thank, thank you, you, Michael. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it.